Дорогие друзья, Dear friends, уважаемые президент Казахстана, президент Казахстан, президент Финляндии, премьер министр Испании. Мне очень приятно, что сегодня мы присутствуем все здесь, в этой аудитории, to discuss problems related to the economy, to the life in our, in our countries, of what we have achieved, of what we are going to achieve. Yesterday, for about half an hour, I was saying what I think it is right to do in this country. I hope that those who listened to my presentation yesterday thought that it was at least somewhat interesting, because I think that such fora are a good venue for discussion of the most burning and pressing issues, the most relevant problems related to the development of our countries. I've just listened to uh, interventions by my colleagues. All of them were very interesting. And, of course, I have some emotional response to them, and I would like to share it now. Prime Minister Sapatero was saying how we were entering the crisis, under what circumstances it was happening. He was talking about the role of emerging markets, which is quite right, and he was also talking about lessons learned from the crisis. There are always lessons to be learned from a crisis. When last night we were discussing the situation in our economies in the European Union, I told uh, the Prime Minister that when at the end of 2008 we got together in the United States, uh, and at that time there was the outgoing administration still in place, and I had an impression that we won't be able to come to terms on anything. I had a feeling that for some reason including the energy displayed by some of my colleagues when, uh, who then assembled that forum, I thought that we will just get together, sit at a great round table, and then we will uh, go each to each, respect, uh, to each respectful corner. Uh, and uh, the, the rules of governing economic relations in the world are not going to be changed. And I am happy to say that at that time I was mistaken. No matter what we say about the achievements of or lack of it of the G20, I would like to say that we were able to agree on a rather important range of impo relevant issues. But this doesn't mean that the work is done. We need to continue this work. President of Finland, Tarja Halonen, was saying that it would be appropriate to discuss such issues not only within the framework of G20 or G8, but within the framework of the United Nations organizations. And this is exactly right. Even the G20, which unites uh, countries with 85 percent of global GDP, cannot be an exclusive club. It should take into account the opinion of all countries and work out universal recommendations. And then those recommendations should probably be further discussed at the United Nations. But we need to continue doing what we are doing now. There are still a lot of issues that have not been resolved yet. We all know that we have been able to somewhat redistribute the quotas of participation in the IMF and the World Bank in favor of uh, uh, fast developing economies, but we haven't finished this, but, and we need to complete this. Rules of financial regulations remain quite archaic, and President Nazarmayev was exactly right about this. Auditing, financial reporting. This is a blank page. Nothing has been done there in practical terms. And this means that taking into account the pro-cyclical nature of uh, crisis, no matter what our at attitude to cyclical theories are or economic theories are, we talked about that yesterday with Prime Minister Sepatera. He thinks that politics should come first. And um, here his position is very clear and strong, but uh, it is quite possible that those difficulties will show up again. But this means that we should work hard everywhere in the G20 format, within other international fora, and there are many of them, the uh, Shanghai Organization of Cooperation, BRICS, the European Union. We need to get together 
and discussed these issues at similar conferences. President Halinin was saying about the very pressing issue that is of huge importance for all of us. That is uh, the problem of loss of jobs. At some point in time, the crisis created uh, such level of unemployment that we all were kind of uh, take it aback. I remember uh, the emotions that reigned at the G20 meeting, but those people who worked on it have managed to achieve certain success. And I'm positive that those countries that are faced with uh, such problems in our Spanish colleagues have this problem uh, now. I think that they still will be able to attain those goals because the most important thing for a government is to create additional jobs that one of the most important tasks. And here we must join our forces. We must concentrate our financial resources and we must try and resolve this problem for the benefit of millions of our citizens, not only in our countries, but also in those countries that are organically linked with us through numerous economic links. President of Kazakhstan, President Nazarbayev, was saying that we are now trying to repair cracks created by the crisis by pouring additional liquidity into those cracks. And this is really so. There are certain advantages to it and certain risks as well. Yes, we have glued together our economies to a certain extent, but will those uh, seams hold? This is the question. Only through additional financial inflows, we won't be able to resolve problems of growth. Now we see that in global economy in the whole, we have some timid overall growth. But I remember in this room probably two years ago, we had a very heated debate about the restorative growth, what kind of shape it is going to take. Either it would be a V-shaped growth or L-shaped growth. But the pessimists said that our growth will be uh, shaped like a, the letter W. Therefore, another bout of crisis is in store for us. And, but this is quite understandable for us today. The situation is probably a little bit more optimistic than we thought then. But there are new challenges that have been discussed by our colleagues at length. Challenges in Southern Europe and some countries of Southern Europe, to be more precise, I think we will be able to cope with those as well because we have mechanisms of integration. We have interdependence between our economies. Yesterday, together with uh, Prime Minister Sapatero, we were uh, talking about what would happen to the global economy if a crisis similar to 2008 crisis occurred 50 or 100 years ago. It is a very scary scenario. Never uh, such crisis ever, um, never such crisis happened in the economy. Economy is global and not only local. And globalism has certain advantages, not only disadvantages. All of us are aspiring towards integration. Our European colleagues have been successful in that. We, together with Kazakhstan and Belarus, we are trying to resolve uh, this problem uh, in our own um, ways. And I hope that we will be able to also succeed in creating single economic space and through integration. We are able to take and to adopt fast solutions. Uh, to overcome the crisis. This wasn't possible 50 years ago. This wasn't possible 100 years ago. And this is the advantage of our today's life, no matter how harshly we criticize it. Dear colleagues, I would like to thank you sincerely for coming to St. Petersburg. I'm now addressing the representatives of the business community which is already in love with St. Petersburg. You come regularly to our forum. You uh, sign contracts on the sidelines of our forum. You communicate, you listen to global leaders, and this is very important. If we, there is no communication with, amongst business leaders, it means we are faced with a huge problem. It was a great pleasure that in 2009, when everybody's mood was not very good, to say the least, 
quite a few people attended uh, from amongst the uh, leaders and CEOs of largest world companies at this forum. I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, leaders and heads of state. Thank you for actively participating in our forum. Yesterday, there was an interesting presentation about the Chinese economy by the chairman of the People's Republic of China, Hu Jintao. I talked to the president of Sri Lanka, to Prime Minister of Belgium, and here I have my colleagues from Finland, Spain, and Kazakhstan. And this means that we are ready to discuss various issues. We understand that we are dependent on one another. We are not closed. We are open, and we openly discuss our problems, and that is why I am sure that we will achieve success. Thank you again very much for coming here. And my last remark. Yesterday, when I arrived here, I was pleasantly surprised by the weather in St. Petersburg. Our weather is not always a source of joy for us. It was very sunny, it was hot, and last night we were saying how comfortable the weather was, and my friend, uh, Prime Minister of Spain, was said, I'm going for a run in the morning. We met in the morning and I asked him, did you go for a run? He says, no. It started to rain and I don't run in such weather. Why am I saying all this? Our economy is as changeable as weather in St. Petersburg. It may be sunny, it may be rainy, but in any weather we must work. And coming to work in any weather, we must understand that sooner or later, sun will come out. And in our countries, we will see stable growth and progress. And we are working for this goal. Thank you very much for your attention.